We did it. We made it, my friends. Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world and getting your festiveness on. I surely am. If you're new here, welcome. Every week I sit down and chat about what I've been knitting, primarily knitting, and we do also have some quilting and some sewing happening. I dive down many different rabbit holes. If that is your jam, gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. Uh, just a little heads up, this is the last episode that I'm going to be recording until the new year. Uh, I think we have maybe like two, three weeks left in in December, which is again, crazy sauce. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to just taking some time for myself to recharge, to make all the things because I truly enjoy creating videos. And you know, I've been doing this for, for over 10 years now. I, I, I cannot believe it. And I, I don't, see myself stopping. So I think it's important to take some time every once in a while to just kind of clear the decks. Uh, so that is the plan for the coming weeks. Today, I thought that I would go through all of my FOs from 2022, just a roundup of everything that I've knit, everything that I've finished. So uh, without further ado, let's get into things. By the way, because I know I'm gonna get asked, this sweater, I did not knit this, no, my friends. I actually purchased this from Zara. I mean, can you blame me? I could not resist. I couldn't stay away. It was just, <laughs> normally I don't wear like big, bold, bright prints, but here and there, I like throwing a little whimsy into the mix. And the sheep, it just, it called out to me. And dare I say, it's giving me a little bit of Princess Diana vibes. Um, I don't know if you remember, she wore that red jumper with the all the white sheep and then there was like one black sheep. I kind of wish this one had just one black sheep on it, but you know, the sweater still makes me very, very happy. Uh, so unfortunately, no, I did not knit this, but I think it encapsulates the spirit of knitting. So anyway, <laughs> that, that, that is what I am currently wearing. We'll get to what Margaret the Mannequin is wearing a little bit later because I want to do this in chronological order. So the first FO that I finished in 2022 is, was, let me see, my Kala shawl. And I recently talked about this on, on the channel because Margaret the Mannequin was wearing it, I think a couple weeks ago, but here we are again. Uh, my Kala shawl by Natasha Hornby. This is from Lina Magazine, I believe issue seven. I could be wrong, but I'll pop it in the down bar. bar, bar. And it is knit out of Lamana Como yarn. And it's just this wonderful, beautiful, squishy, <sighs> buttery soft merino. Um, first time working with it and I, I I really want to knit a sweater out of this yarn. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, I will stand up so you can see, but yeah, just a really gorgeous triangular shawl with a waffle texture and these beautiful lacy cable-y calla lily motifs. And it just, you know, this basically flew off my needles just because I was so invested in it. And it was definitely, um, I, I, it was definitely a product knit, but it turned out to be a process knit because I just thoroughly enjoyed the whole process of, of knitting it. And yeah, again, it just, it flew off my needles. And I have to say, unfortunately, again, it's not getting very much wear for me yet. Um, I do, <laughs> I should just leave it out next to my coat before I head out the house. This way it's in sight and I can be like, oh, let me wear my Kala shawl because it is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shawl and highly recommend knitting one. Uh, yay, look how cozy that is. I'm, I'm smitten. So num that was number one. <laughs> Let's get rid of the reindeer ear. <laughs> Let's get rid of the reindeer ears for now. Finished object number two was my ranunculus. And I feel like I just finished this. Um, this was the first project that I knit when Dennis and I moved into this house. Uh, I had just met a whole bunch of wonderful knitters in the area, Jonna uh, and Kim of the Knit Together with Jonna and Kim podcast, uh, Katie of Katie Did Bags, and um, Tara of Crystal Tea Knits, and just, you know, I'm so sorry if I'm forgetting your names, but yeah, I, I just met so many wonderful people, and, and this project was completely inspired by everyone else's ranunculus. Again, like, everyone and their monkey's uncle 
has a ranunculus. If they don't have one, they have two, they have three, some some even have knit six ranunculus. And ranunculi, what's plural of ranunculus? I don't know, but I, I, I wanted to join in on the fun, so I knit myself a ranunculus, finally. It's been in my queue forever and a day. I have so many happy memories baked into this sweater of just, you know, going to pick up every stitch, picking out the yarn, meeting, so many new and wonderful, inspiring and creative people. And yeah, it's it just gives me the warm and fuzzies every time I, I wear it or think about it. Um, yeah, and the yarn. Oh my goodness, the yarn. Uh, I knit this holding, holding two strands of yarn together. The first yarn was what is Ilamani Sabri, which is a blend, a surprising blend of cotton and alpaca, I believe, which, you know, in, in thinking about it, it seems like a very weird, um, weird fiber blend, but it, it is so incredibly soft. If you can find some Ilmani Sabri, just get yourself a skein or two and oh, it's, it's delicious. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I was holding that together with a strand of Ito Sensei, which is a lace weight silk mohair blend. And it has this beautiful marled effect that I absolutely love. And yeah, I mean, again, a super, super simple pattern to whip up. Again, another one that just flew off my needles. Um, however, I don't foresee myself knitting another one in the near future. I, you know, usually, usually when I knit a pattern, uh, once I'm done with it, I wanna move on to the next thing. Although I can see why people knit more than one of these, just because it's a very simple pattern, easy to memorize, and once you've knit one or two, you kinda of get the gist of it. So it's definitely, like if you're not into knitting socks and need like a go-to pattern for a comfort knit or what have you, this is definitely a great option for that. But for me, I'm okay. I just, I'm, I'm good with one. So <laughs> this is my ranunculus and I love it. The third thing that I finished this year was a pair of socks that I do not have on my person right now because I gifted them to my mother-in-law. Uh, they were knit out of my hand-dyed yarn, Volenbein yarns, on my footsie base, which is a delightful blend of superwash blue face luster and nylon. Again, I don't consider myself a sock knitter, but sometimes, once in a blue moon, I will knit a pair as gifts. Um, I love knitting socks for Dennis. I love knitting gifts for my in-laws. They are so incredibly knit-worthy. My, my father-in-law, Hi, Ron. <laughs> They're watching. Uh, he is long overdue for a new pair of socks. So, uh, you know, hold that thought. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting around to it. But this pair in particular went to my mother-in-law. The colorway, I should mention, is my Enjoy the Silence colorway, uh, obviously inspired by Depeche Mode's song. If you haven't heard it, go to Spotify now or wherever you get your music streamed from and check it out. It is one of my all-time favorite 80s new wave songs. So that was my third finished object. The fourth finished object is, I am, I, again, I'm very surprised at myself, but I, I managed to finish another sweater, The Fiola by Isabel Kramer. And I knit this as part of Kim and Jana of the Knit Together with Kim and Jana podcast. Uh, they co-hosted a knit along uh, with, in collaboration with Mayak Fibers and Isabel Kramer. So uh, uh, the yarn is knit out of Mayak Fibers baby yak lace in the mustard colorway. I never thought gold or mustard would be my color, but this one in particular, yeah, this one gets a lot of wear. So uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed knitting with the yarn. It is so buttery soft. Highly, highly recommend Mayak Fibers. Uh, and the pattern, the Fiola Pullover, is by Isabel Kramer. And oh my goodness, what a wonderful pattern. Uh, the construction was refreshing. I think that's the best way I can describe it because as I was knitting this, I was being introduced to so many new techniques when it comes to sweater construction, you know, and usually I'm used to just knitting my yokes in the round, doing a little color work and then, you know, separating for the sleeves and knitting the body. But this is just like all inclusive. <laughs> it's an all inclusive resort, my friends. The, the lace stitches on the sleeves, I mean, very intuitive, very memorizable. And yeah, I could easily just follow along and out of my needles, the sweater grew. Uh, and this detail right here, I, I'm obsessed. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's, it's like jewelry. It, you know, you don't need to wear a necklace or anything with this because it's all built in. Again, all inclusive. And that is the Fiola by Isabel Kramer. Number five uh, is a shawl, another shawl. We have the Miss May MCAL by Helen Stewart. So this was Helen Stewart's mystery knit along. And I know I said that I was not going to do another mystery knit along, at least not for a while, but when Helen Stewart released this mystery knit along, it just ticked all of my boxes when it came to aesthetics. Again, it was a mystery knit along. I had no idea what the finished 
object was going to be like, but this pattern was very inspired by the arts and crafts movement, which if you're not familiar came after the art, or like, you know, maybe a little overlap between the Art Nouveau, art nouveau movement, which I is hands down my favorite art movement um, of all time. And I'm a huge fan of William Morris and Miss May was his daughter. So anyway, she gives a whole history behind it throughout the, the MCAL. So not only was it fun, I learned a lot along the way when it came to the arts and crafts movement and um, who May Morris was. And I did hold out. I held out for quite some time until I did start taking peeks at spoilers and I'm like, you know what? Hopped on the mystery knit along bandwagon and here we are. Uh, I will stand up so you can see. It is quite large, <laughs> which Helen Stewart is known for. She does like to knit a lot of schlankety schlankets and um, you know, these magnificent epic shawls, like usually crescent shawls, half circle shawls or half pie shawls and full pie shawls. And you know, I am, I am completely here for it because I, you know, Helen, I don't know if you're watching, but I'm a huge fan of her work. I love all her designs. She can do no wrong when it comes to pattern design, and this was no exception. The yarn is my hand-dyed yarns, again, <laughs> in several different colorways. Um, this is my, what is it? My Jilted Rose colorway, and then down here we have Dirty on Purpose, Woolen Vine number nine, and what was this one? This was seven year stitch, which was my seventh year anniversary colorway that I dyed for my yarn shop. And the base that I'm using again is my footsie base, which is um, a blend of superwash, blue face luster, and nylon, which typically I would consider sock yarn, but this was the first project that I ever knit using quote unquote sock yarn. It just goes to show you that, you know, just cause it says sock yarn does not mean that you have to knit socks with it. You can use that yarn to knit whatever you like. And you know, this is still incredibly soft next to skin. It, the BFL adds a little bit of toothiness to it, but nothing that's going to be too itchy or scratchy next to your neck when you wear it as a shawl. If anything, the BFL together with the nylon adds a little bit of sturdiness to it. So it can take a little bit more wear and tear, if you will. So yeah, that is my Miss May shawl. Guys, I don't know if you can see the big old shiner on my face. Yeah, <laughs> I woke up with a giant zit on my face, trying to cover it up, but it's so big that the concealer cannot even do its job. So, you know, if you're wondering what the heck is on my face, it's a zit. Hopefully we can all just coexist. Uh, so anyway, coffee, coffee, I need a coffee break. I think we are down, yes, we are down to the final, final F.O. Last but not least, Marga the Mannequin. She is wearing my latest F.O. and that is the Nightingale Pullover. This was a pattern that um, Nora Gon designed for Pom Pom Magazine. I believe it was issue number 27. It was very much inspired by the Victorian era and just, like strong warrior women. And I definitely get vibes from that because I don't know if you watch the Fruity Knitting podcast, um, but Andrea, who also knit this pattern, she said that the the cable motif on the chest and the back reminded her of a shield and I am totally getting vibes from that. I actually, you know, truth be told, whenever I wear that sweater, I definitely get superhero knight in shining armor vibes wearing that sweater. It's a little it's a little interesting, but uh anyway, I am so proud of this because this sweater was 2 years in the making. I cast it on 2 years ago, then kind of hit a wall with it and let it fall to the wayside. Uh, several, I'm going to say a couple of months ago, I did an episode where I pulled all of my UFOs out of hibernation and went through them one by one and basically audited them. And this one I decided was one of the projects that I was going to finish first and so glad that I did. I mean, yeah, wasn't easy. It was definitely a labor of love for sure. Lots of cabling, lots of seaming, uh, setting in sleeves, lots of new to me techniques. It definitely pushed my knitting skills to the limit. And But I persevered and again, I'm so glad that I did. We now have a beautiful, gorgeous sweater that I get to enjoy. And the yarn that I used for this is Quince & Co Lark, which is 100% wool, worsted weight, in this beautiful like purplish slate gray colorway, I want to say. Rhyming, totally unintended. My goodness, I think these sheep are putting me in rare form. <laughs> a little, a little kooky today, guys. Uh, just rolling with it. And those are all the projects that I finished in 2022. Six, six in total. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, let me see. I had two shawls, three sweaters, 
and a pair of socks. I mean, three sweaters. That's nothing to sniff at. Although I, I know there are some of you out there that during the pandemic, you cranked out sweater after sweater after sweater. Unfortunately, I cannot knit that fast. So my hat's off to you if you can do that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very satisfied with how many projects I managed to finish this year. However, I'd be remiss not to mention the other projects that I cast on in 2022 that didn't get finished. Either they're, they're waiting to be finished in the process of being finished or just kind of languishing and I'm waiting for the motivation to frog them. I was going to talk about them in this episode, but then after thinking about it a little bit, I think I'm going to hold off and do another audit video where I go, I pull out all of my unfinished objects and talk through them and figure out if I'm going to finish them, if I'm going to frog them. You all seem to like that. So we're going to hold off on a future episode for, for that. But I hope you enjoyed this episode and going through all of the projects that I finished this year. How many projects did you finish this year? Let me know in the comments down below and which projects are you the most proud proud of. I would love to hear about it. And I'm sure a lot of other viewers do as well. So that said, my goodness, last episode of 2022. We did it. We made it, my friends. And I'm so glad that you are along for the ride. Uh, but again, just a heads up, uh, I'm not going to be uh, uploading a video until January. And if you are a member of this YouTube channel, thank you. Thank you so very much for supporting this channel and the work that I do here. Uh, but just to give you guys a heads up, I'm not going to be uploading from now until January as well. So thank you so much in advance for your patience. I'm trying to think what else. I feel like I should say something profound, but I'm, I'm drawing a blank guys. I'm, I'm just, I'm so looking forward to taking a little break. Um, but anyway, that said, I'm going to put my reindeer antlers back on. Uh, thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. Happy holidays to you and yours. Happy new year. I am excited to see what 2023 brings. Hopefully knock on wood, all good things. So without further ado, happy knitting, happy making, and I will see you next year. Bye.